All right, so um, I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. I think they should, for the most part, be a review type question. Um, again, one thing when you're studying that's a good sort of thing to check with, with Math 12 is you should ask yourself if this would be a calculator permitted question or not. So in the first example, um, you can see with all the decimals here that it's going to be a calculator question. So there's no harm then in picking up the calculator to answer this question. If there had not been decimals there, if there had been pies and other things, then that would probably be the best indicator for you that you want to try it without the calculator so that you know you're studying properly. So anyways, for this one to convert, we'd have 100 times pi over 180, and that gives us um, 1.75. So 1.75 in radians. Um, the next example says, given a circle with radius 10 centimeters, calculate the length of an arc, which contains, well, this is two radians, so we might as well name that as two radians. So um, basically what we need to figure out then is there's that formula we've already discussed, that um, arc length is equal to the radius times the angle. And this must be in radians. So I know in our quiz, in our quiz, some people came up with like 10,000 centimeters as their answer because they multiplied like 100 degrees by whatever, you know, the 100 for the radius. So you ended up with this massive number, which was means like the <coughs> pendulum that, it, that, that was on that quiz was going to be like from Guilford Mall to Johnson Heights big, right? So anyways, um, it has to be in radians, which it is, so we can proceed immediately. Um, it's going to be two radians, and the radius is 10 centimeters. So I'm going to end up with 20 centimeters as the arc length. Okay, um, exact value is something that you'll be responsible for as well. So um, the way we would work this question, we had those, those first couple key things we need to figure out, um, like which quadrant is this angle in? Yeah, this is quadrant 4. It's just a little bit less than 2 pi, but it's more than 3 pi over 2. So we'd find it in quadrant 4. How many people are doing this now in radians? They're not converting to degrees. Good. Okay, life will be easier for you, I promise, if you're, if you're still doing it in uh, radians. Okay, um, and we can get a reference angle out of this, which is pi over 6. Um, so, you know, in your head, pi over 6 you should know is 30 degrees. So the triangle that I'd like to be looking at is this one. And there's root 3, 2, and 1. Okay. So if I'm going to be dealing with cosine, it's going to be the adjacent over the uh, hypotenuse. So here's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That means it's going to be a root 3 over 2. Okay. But, um, of course, that's for pi over 6. In quadrant 4, will the cosine be positive or negative? Yeah. So if it's positive, we could just rewrite this as the cosine pi over 6, which is root 3 over 2. If it was negative, we'd have to add the negative sign in there. But luckily, we're done. It's at D. Okay, this time for secant, um, we are again in quadrant 4. Um, the reference angle is going to be pi over 4. And um, in quadrant 4, it's positive, so I could rewrite this just as secant pi over 4. Okay. So that leaves me with the triangle that looks like this. 1, 1, root 2. And 45 degrees or pi over 4 are the angles for both. So that means I'm going to be secant, which is, remember, it's part of Chosha Kao. And uh, so Sha is hypotenuse over adjacent. It's going to be root 2 over 1, which is just root 2. So notice that there is 1 over root 2, in case you goofed it up with the cosine. Um, and the negatives are also in there too. So be, uh, just be careful before you circle your final answer. Whoops. 
So the terminal arm of an angle um, passes through the point negative 2, 5. Before I do anything else, I would draw that picture so I don't have to uh, process any more information. So negative 2, 5 will be something like that. Okay. Um, and it says we want to determine the secant. So here's the triangle that was formed. And remember, the reason I've kept the negative sign is that now the cast rule is built into my question. So if I do it this way, I can use Pythagoras to figure out this is root um, 29. Uh, maybe I'll write it in a different color because that's hard to see with the black line. Uh, root 29. Okay, and this is the reference angle. So this is the angle that I'm doing it relative to. Secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And again, since I've kept the negative in, it appears in my answer as negative root 29 over 2. So I know the answer must be C. And again, cosine is, and secant are both negative in quadrant 2, so we would expect our answer to be negative, which it is. Okay, this one, uh, oops, too far. The point MN is the intersection of the terminal arm, um, blah, 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 and the unit circle. So the unit, fact that unit circle is mentioned is important. Okay. What do you know about the unit circle that's important and that's helpful? It's past 9.30, that's a legitimate question. What's important when you hear unit circle? I know I saw you all write it in your notes somewhere. I know it's somewhere in there. Radius is 1, yeah, that's part of the unit circle. What else do you know about it? Sine is y and cos is x, tangent is sine over cos, etc. Those relationships between the ratios and the circle are what's important. So if I was somewhere on the unit circle, maybe I'm at this point here, mn, okay, and it wants to know what's the sine. So since this is the unit circle, the sine is the y coordinate, which is this one. So really, it's a, just a very wordy question that asks if you understand that sine is connected to the y-coordinate. Okay, uh, all of that is just to circle the uh, value for n. Okay. In the next one, uh, we discussed how to find the range of the graph. So the way we're thinking about it is here's the center line and the amplitude. So if the center line was at 8, this graph is going to go up by 5 and down by 5. So that means I'll find myself at 13, and I'll find myself at 3. So the range of the graph goes from 13 to 3, which is B. So determine the period of the graph. Um, in this question, that number there has nothing to do with the answer. That is just to distract you and think that it may mess things up. Um, the only thing that will affect the period in this situation is the 4 right here. So that's the only thing we will pay attention to. There's a couple ways to do this. One way is to say normally it has a period of 2 pi. This has a horizontal stretch factor of 1 quarter. So 2 pi times 1 quarter is going to be pi over 2. So that's using your transformations knowledge. The other way to do it, we talked about specifically that whatever number was to appear in front of the x, 2 pi divided by that number would give me the, uh, the value for the period. So that's also pi over 2. Okay. So um, A would be our answer. Okay. So, um, whoop, too far. We also talked about uh, situations when you may have a le letters instead of numbers, and it seemed like we were okay with that. The idea is the same, center line and amplitude. If I have a center line, I don't know what the value is, I've just called it the letter D. To get the maximum, it's going to go up by the amplitude A, which means here I will be at D plus A, which is uh, C. Um, number 10, I would say number 10 is, is as much of a transformations question as it is a uh, trig question. The only thing that doesn't, that, you know, that makes this a trig question and not a pure transformations question is this term here. So the only thing you have to be able to do is remember the phase shift is a translation on a trig graph.
But then once you've done that, the transformation itself, that goes all the way back to our first unit. So before we talk about translations, what we should do is factor out that value so we can see properly in standard form what that translation will be. So this, this graph actually will go pi over 8 to the right. Okay. A wheel rolling along the ground. Uh, too far. A wheel rolling along the ground has a radius of 32 centimeters and rotates once every 8 seconds. So let me record a few things here. First of all, I know the period is 8. If I draw the wheel and the ground is right there where it touches, um, it says it has a radius of 32 centimeters. So what that means then is the point is going to go from 32 up to 64 and down to 0 by the radius. So it's going up and down by the radius. So right away I should be able to pick out that the amplitude is connected to the radius in this case. Okay, because it's bobbing up and down by the radius. Um, the center line here is 32. And it says that this point on the outside edge is touching the ground. So if it's touching the ground, that's the picture I have here doesn't matter which way the wheel rolls, it has to start rising. So a rough picture of it would look like this. It has to go from minimum and start rising, which looks like a negative cosine graph. So one possible model I could come up with is a negative 32 cosine. Now 2 pi over 8, we can simplify that. And 2 pi over 8 would make this the cosine pi over 4, which is uh, C. Okay. And of course, if you prefer to find the amplitude in the center line by looking at the minimum and maximum, you could also figure out this is 64 and that the ground is 0. You could use that as well to help if it's uh, the way you like to do it. Okay. Um, tell me about asymptotes for secant. Where do you get an asymptote for secant? Uh, that, uh, may, that may be where, but um, wh wh how did you know that? You looked at the cosine graph. Good. So what you have to remember is that secant is 1 over cosine. So if I divide by 0, that's when I'm going to get the asymptote. So dividing by 0 means cosine has to equal to 0. So there's a couple ways you could do it. Number one is you could look at the cosine graph. You should know it well enough now to know that one value here is pi over 2. Another value there is 3 pi over 2. The other way that we've talked about is it's on the unit circle. Okay, if cosine x is equal to 0, that means the x coordinate equals 0. So it would be one of those two, which again, that's 3 pi over 2. And that's... Um, Sorry, that's pi over 2. The other is 3 pi over 2. So I'm only given one of those choices, which is this one here. Determine the period of the graph. Uh, again, normally it's pi. Right now I have a horizontal stretch factor that is 5 over pi. So I can use my transformations knowledge to get 5. Otherwise, we said specifically for tangent and cotangent, it will be pi divided by that number. Okay, so you have a messy fraction to deal with there, but you would end up with the same number, 5. Okay, so the period for cosecant, remember this does nothing to the period. That's just a distraction. What is the period of the cosecant graph? Yeah, it's normally 2 pi. So normally it would look like this if I just do a rough sketch to jog your memory, right, and so on. And this is the period here, which was 2 pi. And I think if you, I mean, there's a really bad sketch, but it kind of pairs up to the same period as the sine graph. So uh, the period is 2 pi. 
It's not been a, it's not been changed in this question. 